You have found Authentic Business Adventures, the business program that brings you the struggle stories and triumphant successes of business owners across the land. The past episodes of the Authentic Business Adventures program can be found on the podcast link at drawincustomers.com. We are coming to you from the Sun Prairie Community Radio Studios, underwritten by Bank of Sun Prairie. My name is James Kademan, entrepreneur, author, speaker, and helpful coach to small business owners across the country. Today, we're welcoming slash preparing to learn from Jennifer Phillips, the director at, of the Wisconsin ESL Institute. Jennifer, how are you doing today? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm doing very well. Good. I'm excited to have you in here because you have so much going on. Yeah, we have a lot going on at the moment. And uh, yeah, it's kind of crunch time for us now. It is. Yeah, in the end of the spring, we've got some renovations going on our uh, building at the moment. So we're about two weeks away from sort of moving for that. Oh, and moving like it's and done or just starting? Yeah, moving, it's going to be done. Wow. So, yeah, ribbon cutting ceremony March 2nd. <laughs> so, oh, nice. That's only a couple there. weeks, not even. Yeah, Holy yeah, cow. I know. So Very cool. Yeah, we're getting there. Um, but yeah, everything's, everything's going well. You know, the... This sort of winter springs a little bit of sure. like downtime at the school for us. Right. Oh, it's downtime everywhere. But, yeah. People hibernate. <laughs> they really do, especially with weather like this. Yes. Not ideal today. <laughs> not. not the greatest. For those of you listening in warmer places, we wish We're you... We're Yeah. We want to move where you are. Yes. <laughs> but we don't have earthquakes here, so that's cool. No, we don't. You know, yeah. Yeah. And, and it's so pretty after the snow is done. So it it, it kind of cleans it's up. That's right. It does. Yeah. That's true. It does. So the ESL Institute, why don't you tell people just what is that? Yeah, sure. So, you know, we've been in Madison for almost 40 years now. 40? Um, 4 zero? Yeah, 4 zero. Wow. I know, you know, and I think it's one of those things where I tell people and they're like, oh, really? I've never heard of you. Um, <laughs> Thanks, <but> jerk. Huh? <laughs> exactly. So we're downtown on the Capitol Square. Okay. Um, we're sort of, we're right next to the Old Fashioned and Harvest Restaurant. Sure. Okay. Right there. Um, you know, so you may have seen students hanging outside the building before sure. and thought, you know, really nothing of it, but that's where we are. That's where the school's All located. Right. How are you not 500 pounds? Oh, I, so, you know, when you smell sort of fried cheese curds every day, yeah. they, they, well, I guess maybe once a week you want to have them. Sure. <laughs> but then, <laughs> that's enough? That, that's enough. Okay. Yeah. Um, but no, we are pretty lucky. Sure. Um, and the new space that we're in the process of renovating is above the old fashioned and above Harvest Restaurant. Oh, so you're moving like so 20 feet. Yeah. We're just, yeah, sort of popping over. And the building um, was built in 1871. Wow. Um, so we're sort of renovating slash restoring a lot of it. Sure. Exposing the ceilings and the walls and all the rest of it and kind of purpose building it for, for our space and what we want okay. for our students. Um, so yeah, so like I said, Wesley's been around for almost 40 years. Um, we are an ESL institute. Uh, we teach adults English. Okay, sure. So we have students that are here from all around the world, um, countries Saudi Arabia, Colombia, Brazil, Panama, sure. um, Japan, South Korea, really everywhere. All right. We have about 100 students at the moment. Okay. Um, and this summertime, we might get up to about 150. We get some more big groups and things that come wow. in for short-term programs. Okay. Um, and these are students that either want to go to university here in sure. the US, so they need more language. Um, but more and more, you know, after that sort of demographic's been changing, we're getting more and more business clients. So oh. their employers might send, you know, I'm going to send you for four weeks to really improve your business English. Sure. Whether it's writing or presentation skills or things like that. Okay. Um, so we have seven levels, zero. So we teach the alphabet. Okay. Um, all the way up through, you know, students going to write their PhD theses in wow. English. Wow. So, yeah, kind of across the board. It's a mix sure. of everything. Okay. Um, we yeah, run classes all day, um, five days a week, Monday through Friday. We also have a teacher training program. Okay. So for people that, you know, sort of, I don't know, mid-career, want to do something different. Yeah. Or maybe graduated from college and went, oh, I've got a lot of student loans, but I don't <laughs> want to get a real job yet. Sure. What can I do? Right. Um, so we certify people to teach and send them abroad to, to teach English. They might do it for a couple of years. Yeah. You know, have some fun, earn some money. Wow. Ex you know, experience a different culture. And okay. A lot of them come back. Um, so you States. send them abroad... Yeah, so we have uh, sort of school partners all over the place. Oh, really? Um, okay. So we just had a couple of students come back that were in Taiwan for about a year. So they wow. were teaching at a couple of different schools in Taiwan and came back. Okay. Um, but yeah, and that's sort of how I started into this. And all right. So I I got my TEFL certificate and then taught in Ecuador and Thailand and New Zealand. Did you really? Yeah, and then came back here. I'm from Madison originally. Okay. I had no idea that this was even a career or anything. Sure. But yeah, graduated from, from the UW with a geography major. Very all right, practical. that's um, so close to what you're doing, right? Yeah, <laughs> loved it, but uh, 
yeah, you know, it's like, what kind of, I'm going to be a geographer. Not really sure what that looks <laughs> like. There's rocks job. everywhere. It's all good. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I got my teaching um, certificate and went abroad and taught for a number of years. Through Wesley? No, just through sort of finding random jobs here okay. and there. Um, it's kind of a network. Um, you could find jobs online. Sure. I sort of am a proponent for just going to the country you want to go right. to. You'll figure it out when you get there. <laughs> um, that's awesome. So, yeah, so that's kind of uh, how I ended up in that. And then moved home with the intention of, well, I'll be home for, you know, maybe six months just so I sort of figure out what I want to sure. do. And then, yeah, eight, here you are. nine years later, I'm still here. Nice. Um, yeah. So You've been at Wesley for over yeah, eight years? Yeah, over eight years, yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I came in, just got a, you know, sort of a part-time teaching job. Sure. And, and then one thing led to another, and now here I am. Pretending that, is that crazy. I know what I do on a daily sure. basis. <laughs> hey, we all do. <laughs> What's interesting is that it is rare that I find anyone that has held the same job for more than five years. I want to say, well, even three or four is yeah. almost record-breaking. You know, I think uh, I'm really lucky in that the, you know, sort of Wesley is a very unique environment. Sure. Um, You know, and it's a place that if you just want to teach, you know, for 20 years, yeah. you can do that. We have teachers that have been with the school for 25, 30 years. Really? Yeah, which is pretty Full-time? crazy. Full-time? Full-time, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, All right. You know, so there's never a boring day on sure. the job, that's <laughs> I for bet. sure. Um, you know, even if the classes are the same that you're teaching, the students are changing, mm-hmm. you know, the countries that they're coming from are changing, so it always sure. makes it exciting. Um, but yeah, for me, you know, so I started teaching and then sort of took over the curriculum management and things yeah. and then started to do marketing, recruitment, um, you know, and then that led to sort of taking over running the school. Wow. Um, and, and all that goes with it. And again, every day there's a new opportunity. Sure. So with the um, challenges that we've had <laughs> recently with enrollment declines across the country and international okay. education and things, it's been tough for us. You said enrollment declines. Yeah. Tell so, me about that. Yeah, sort of across the country you're going to see, um, in ESL schools in particular, schools are closing left and right. You know, really? Populations might be down. So even five, six years ago, we had about 400 students, you know, and now we have 100 students. Wow, so you're talking 25% of yeah. what you used to, but they're not making less people. No, so a lot of different things are going on. So okay. one, our current administration doesn't always sort of, you know, support an open environment for students sure. to come. When you say um, administration, you mean school administration or more government? Government that, administration. Okay. So just, you know, if you're looking at visas and things like that. Sure. So there's been a lot of, you know, in the last couple of years, you know, items in the news where you think, oh, we're sure. not accepting students from this country or this country. Right. Um, and that, or anywhere. Yeah, or anywhere. <laughs> exactly. You know, and it's not actually that our visa denials, have we haven't seen a change in them. Okay. Um, but it's the perception. So when I go sure. abroad and I'm in Brazil, you know, they're going to hear this on the news and say, oh, the U.S. doesn't oh, want students. So they don't even try. Exactly. They don't even oh, try. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and then a lot of other, so countries like Canada have done a lot to welcome students in. Sure. Not just welcome them in. They can work while they're studying. There's right. a clear path to residency after sure. they're done um, with their studies. So it's, you know, there's more competition than sure. there used to be. So the U.S. is still a great market. Um, you know, it's still a good destination, but it's not the only one. You sure. Know, maybe even one of the top ones anymore. Right. Malta came out of nowhere in the last couple of years. Malta, what is yeah, Malta? tiny island in okay. the Mediterranean, right? Exactly. What is, who, who knows of it? <laughs> I don't know. Um, but they are one of the, I think for a lot of countries, one of the top five um, destinations now for English language study. Really? Which is just crazy. <laughs> Wait, people just so, go to some island to learn English? Uh-huh. Yeah, which doesn't sound terrible. Okay, really, it doesn't, especially, yeah, especially in a day, like day right? Right. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, there's, you know, so a lot of other opportunities, you know, that they want to mix tourism with English sure. and things like that. So we've been really lucky here um, in Madison. That Madison's such a wonderful community. It is. So in, you know, and a lot of other places, they're starting to really feel, you know, are we going to have to cut programming? Are we going to have to close schools and things sure. like that? We're not really in that position where, you know, in the last about three years ago, we kind of made a big change to decide, you know, we want the school to go forward and what is it going to look like? So we've changed our programming, increased some of the business opportunities and things Mm -hmm. like that that we have. But then also really looking into the Madison community to see, you know, what what makes us a wonderful destination? Mm -hmm. Us being Madison. Us being Madison. Exactly. You know, so I joke that half my job is I travel around the world and tell people where Wisconsin is. Um, (laughs) You know, it's generally not a place that they've heard of. Um, You know, or Madison and they're like, oh, Bridges of Madison. (coughs) No, 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 not not that place. So, yeah, you know, and I but. 
in you know in conjunction with the city in the last few years Madison's done a lot to put itself on the map internationally. It has tried. You know, yeah. so CrossFit Games, for example, sure. has been huge for us. So Brazil is one of our biggest markets. Okay. They are CrossFit crazy. You know, Brazil so, is? Yes, massively. So I don't know how many thousands of people came in this last year, but thousands of Brazilians came and will come again in August this year for the CrossFit Games. Wow. And so now when I go, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, I've actually heard of Madison. You sure. Know, they're related to CrossFit or mm -hmm. um you know, the, the World Dairy Expo in right. town. And some of those big things are helping to put us on the map. Um, and then that makes my job easier because, sure. you know, I can start to talk more about the programming we have rather than just why would you want to come to a place that you've never heard of right. um, for <laughs> this fair. experience. So, yeah, so we're doing a lot, you know, and, yeah, trying to partner with different people in the local community. Sure. What kind of joint programming can we offer? Right. You know, if you think of, like, oh, okay, I want to take a vacation. Maybe I want to learn some Italian. What do you want to do? You want to do a, you know, a wine and cheese tasting course or sure. something like that. Well, you know, traditionally, we've really just looked at it as it, we provide English language and that's it. Right. So now we're trying to say, well, what makes us unique and what can we do? So can we sure. offer... Um, you know, beer and cheese and English. Oh. Can we offer golf in English, CrossFit right. in English. You know, sure. so we call these English Plus programs. Okay. Um, and those have been really popular. Sure. Um, but other things that aren't just you know sort of fun, fun as well. But uh, what volunteering opportunities are available in the community? Sure. So a lot of our students are coming, are wanting you know to do more to practice their English, to get involved in the community. All right. Um, you know, so our goal really is that students come in and they don't just feel a part of our school family that mm -hmm. they feel a part of the community as okay. a whole and so part of that is yeah giving out you know getting back out into the community giving back and things like that so can you kind of describe for me the typical student so, do they know english at all or are they yeah i guess you know I, we don't really have a typical student i would say you know we kind of have different groups of students so sure. we get students that come and have hello okay <laughs> yeah, all right <laughs> you know, and that's maybe it sure um you know, when I first started teaching, you know, I taught some 100 level basic classes mm -hmm. and I was teaching the alphabet, you know, so right. the Arabic speakers or, um, you know, they Chinese characters, they don't know the alphabet. Um, Man, I look at Chinese and I wonder, one of us has a complicated language. I don't know who it is. But. They're both complicated, but Chinese is extra complicated. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting because you might have a class of, you know, people from six or seven different countries with six or seven different language backgrounds and you know within eight weeks mm -hmm. they're all hi how are you you know my name is they can have to the point of having a conversation yeah, even definitely. if it's a basic one yeah mm -hmm. that's impressive is yeah. that are they in class full time yeah they're in class full time so they come here on okay. a student visa all right um, and so they're in class four to six hours a day all right and then there's a lot of homework and things so it's a super intensive experience sure. for them um, you know, this is not for the, the faint of heart. These are people that really, you know, they, they have a goal, they have mm -hmm. a dream, and English is a means to, you know, attaining that goal. Sure. Um, and so they're dedicated, they're serious. Uh, we just had a group of um, 35 Panamanian students um, join us, and th so they'll be here for eight months. Okay. And they are all, um, most of them are from the same university in Panama City. Sure. So they're related to sort of the maritime trades with the Panama Canal and, okay. and that sort of thing. But, you know, they're all here because they finished university, but in order to get jobs when they go back home, they have to speak in English because the ports, right, and everything sure. down in Panama, right, right. it's all done in English. Yeah. So their degree is kind of useless unless they have oh, the language. Oh, interesting. Component. So they're super motivated sure. um, to learn, which is, you know... And that's, I think, part of the reason why you see at Wesley, at least, you know, people have been there for a long time because it's it's an invigorating place. You know, sure. it's an inspiring place. You never go to work and are like, oh, it's just <laughs> you know? Yeah. Right. Like, there, I mean, every job has things that you're like, oh, OK, it's Monday. There are um, days, but I like to think mine don't. But. Yeah, no, exactly. No, well, we have great jobs. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, I think it's it's that's part of it. You know, when you are surrounded by people who on an everyday you know basis are in the process of going through a once in a life opportunity sure. for them you know they're excited and that excitement rubs off that sounds you know? cool so yeah I, when yeah. you put it like that well wow. <laughs> yeah it's pretty cool you know and that's i think why people get dragged in on the teacher training side of things sure you know for their certificate they we have a conversation partner program so 
like let's say you wanted to practice Spanish, you know, mm-hmm. so I could match you with one of my Panamanian students. You'd go have coffee once a week and yeah. maybe speak part of the time in Spanish and spread it the time in English. Sure. Um, you know, and people kind of get caught up in that. They really like it. They enjoy it. And right. I think it's a lot more fulfilling than I think a lot of people find their jobs. Sure. So that one thing turns to another. They just right. oh, I want to become a teacher. And yeah. Sure. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Yeah. So is there a typical age of the students? It yeah, sounds like it's of, younger. It, yeah, it's sort of 22 to 28 is kind okay. of the, I would say, probably 50% of All right. our students. That's a pretty small window. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then in the summers, we get some more high school students, and we're seeing an increase in high school students. Oh, really? Um, across the board. So the you know their language is being taught when they're younger and younger in the sure. whole countries. Um, and so parents are wanting to, you know, rather than go abroad when you're in university mm-hmm. to try and give them that edge, they say, okay, go, you know, go spend a year abroad when you're in high school, for example. Wow. Yeah, so we're getting a lot more high school students. But then we also, on the business side of things, the average age is sort of 35 mm-hmm. to 50. Um, but, you know, we, we do have students that are, you know, 60s and 70s. Sure. All right. Um, yeah. So you got to tell me. Let's see, you had, uh, I'm trying to think of the levels you had. Was there four levels? We have seven levels. Seven levels. Yep. So level zero, you said, was essentially alphabet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that closer six, seven level, that sounds like it's people that know English and yeah. they're just getting more advanced. Exactly. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so our upper levels. So in our in our sort of uppermost levels, we have sort of our core classes, which are reading, writing, listening, and speaking, and grammar. Okay. Um, but then we have a variety of what we call elective classes that are sort of split between those levels as well. So this might be a pronunciation class this might be a business writing class a public speaking course sure um and these are yeah to you or i you know out on the street if you saw them these are totally fluent people right right. they they communicate you know at near native level okay um but in their specific areas of business or you know in the specific area of public speaking they might want more specific practice sure a lot of this too is for students that are academic bound Right. So there's a difference between, you know, sort of general communication fluency and academic fluency. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they might be able to have a full on conversation, but then can they listen to a three hour lecture? Right. You know, take notes and write a research paper. That is so it? funny that they need training for that because so, I totally understand that. Well, and so many of our classes, you know, people will come in and just they want to observe and they'll say, oh, you know, like well, freshmen in college could get something, you know, native, sure. native English speakers. And we say, yes, <laughs> you know, this is a class that a lot of a lot of native sure. English speakers would benefit from as well. I remember when I first got my book edited, when that came back to me, yeah. I thought I knew English, exactly. but holy cow, there was a lot of okay. red. Yes. Yeah, it turns out exactly. I must have dropped the ball there. <laughs> wow. You know, and I just think I, everyone has a different style. Right. Sure. And I think when we're in high school, you know, you learn. Wow. Well, Everyone take English was like my, my least favorite subject sure. in school. I hated it. I so. don't know many people that were like, yes, English right. class. I'm right. a total book nerd, but like, you know, and it came down like to talking about the grammar and stuff. I was just yeah. like, oh, why do you speak English? Sure. Come on. Um, we're good. <laughs> exactly. So, but I think, you know, and from that, a lot of people develop their own style and we kind of intuitively know the language. Sure. But when it comes to writing a book or something mm-hmm. like that, we don't always think through everything right no it's just not the way we naturally not speak. in the way an editor does no <laughs> clearly yeah, not exactly those editors are special people i'm not one of them that's sure not the camp that i'm in but we have right. plenty of them at the school that's interesting so there may be people that are just local yep that would come to your classes specifically to to advance their career in yep. a certain area exactly yeah okay. so we've had clients um you know come in from american family insurance or mm-hmm. some from the state you know, and these are people that have been in the country for maybe 15, 20 years. All right. Um, but they, you know, they've reached a certain position in their job and really to excel to that next level, get that next promotion, maybe turn into a management position. Sure. They need a different command of the English language. Right. You know? And so I think, you know, I'm sure there's people that you, you can think of in your life where there's just a communication barrier. Sure. Whether or not they're non-native or a native speaker. Um, and everyone can get training for that. You mm-hmm. know? So a lot of it's teaching, you know, sort of cultural appropriate communication. Okay, I was going to say, because this starts to go beyond language yeah, itself, right? It's more, I mean, half of our class is language. Sure. The other half is not. <laughs> okay. You know, the other half is, yeah, cultural communication and okay. appropriate conversations inside a workplace, outside of a workplace and things like that. All right. Um, you know, so I think everyone's, well, a lot of people are familiar with like the Toastmasters sure. programs and things mm-hmm. like that. Um, so we have something that... It, doesn't mimic, but I would say complements that a lot. You know, sure. for people that that need to learn. Okay, how do I communicate with a team? You know, mm-hmm. what does an email sound like if I'm, you know, wanting to explain to my boss that 
I really understood all of the points. So oh. just basic email etiquette. Sure. You know, if you went to a meeting, do you respond in an email and, you know, okay, summarized in a one or two sentence of what it was about. Sure. You know, a couple of action points and what you're going to do, you know, to mm -hmm. follow up. That's not necessarily part of everyone's culture, everyone's no. communication culture. Very true. Um, so we teach a lot of those sorts of things to just, yeah, increase communication ability across the board. Sure. Um, in all forms. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So how many teachers do you guys have? So we have 13 teachers at the okay. moment. Um, and that sort of fluctuates. We have full-time and part-time. In the summer, we'll hire some more part-time teachers sure. as well. Um, to help teach some of those classes for, you know, two-week Italian students that want to come right. and just hang out and have fun for the sure. summer. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So you got to tell me a story about the dollars, I guess if you know about them, that you guys are essentially bringing into Madison. Because yeah. if you're bringing these Panamanians, I'm thinking 35 people hanging out for four weeks. For, they're here for eight months. Eight, mo eight months. Eight months. Holy cow. Okay. That's yeah. a lot of money that you're yeah. bringing into the economy. Yes, we bring in thousands and thousands of dollars to the Madison Does the city economy. of Madison or Dane County thank you for that? Do you know, and this is something that I was, so when I took over as director, it, it, the school was sort of in a in a low point. You know, okay. the enrollment was going down. So um, for a lot of schools and for us, you know, uh, specifically, there was a, a scholarship program that the Saudi Arabian government had for okay. the students. Sure. So basically anyone in Saudi Arabia that wanted to – go abroad and learn English and then go to university, you could. The government would pay you. Wow. So they'd pay you. They'd pay. They'd give you a salary. So basically like a living allowance. Um, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. There's money in oil, huh? <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Apparently yeah. Who knew? Right? Who knew? Exactly. <laughs> um, so, you know, they sent thousands of students. And um, when the king, original king that had, uh, King Abdullah, who made the scholarship program, passed away, mm -hmm. um, the his son that took over afterwards um, didn't stop the program but I would say restricted it so there okay. are now a lot more restrictions on the on the program so Saudi numbers across the country just plummeted oh. you know? so whereas we maybe had 200 Saudis we now have 10 Saudis that's a and drop it's a huge right. drop yeah especially for you know full paying students and, sure um, so anyway that sort of coincided with you know the current political administration mm-hmm that, you know, had this sort of rhetoric of maybe not super welcoming, maybe sure. we weren't really wanting to open arms right. to people coming in um, from from around the world. So all these things, plus the strong U.S. dollar. So right. that actually really hurts us. You know? oh, so if you think of okay. you're so Brazilian people, and sure. you're looking at the exchange rate, the stronger the U.S. dollar, sure. the less likely you are, you know, going to feel like, oh, I'm getting a good deal. You just deal. can't afford to come. Exactly. Okay. So those are sort of the three big things that, you know, kind of happen more or less around the same time. And enrollment's just... Yeah, it took a nose down, sure. and ours very much did. You know, so we got to a point where we were at about 60, 60 students, which wow. isn't enough to sustain no. the business at all. No, um, especially downtown. Especially downtown on the square, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, and so that's when I came over, and so it was really sort of this sure. challenge of going, oh Jennifer, save us, right? Like, what do we do? And also, you know, being a teacher in training, like by training, sure. my background is not in business or anything like this. But okay. I have a passion for the school, and I wanted to see it survive and, you know, have a wonderful team of people around me. So mm -hmm. I kind of thought, okay, let's let's get creative. You know, right. let's think outside the box. What are we doing? Um, and so one of those things is working more into the, the local community. So, you know, joining the the Madison Chamber of Commerce mm -hmm. and Discover Madison, mm -hmm. you know, becoming members of those organizations so right. that you know, we can tell people like, hey, we actually bring in a lot of money, sure. you know, to the Madison and not just for short term, right? We're not just talking tourists, but like I said, you know, 35 Panamanians that are yeah. here for eight months. It's a lot of money going in. That into is the community. huge. So, and these are students that are, um, you know, they're not just studying on the weekends and not going out, you know, they're right. trying all the restaurants, they're, you know, going to the winter festivals. They sure. went to the Badger hockey game over the weekend. Right. Um, you know, so they're really trying to get out and enjoy their time. Right. Um, so trying to do that, you know, sort of ex increased exposure for us. You know, right. So people kind of see us. And I'm not 100% sure what kind of support we'll get from that. But, right. I, you know, I think it's, yeah, increasing, you know, sort of our visibility. I would think a thank you card would be a good start. Yeah. <laughs> <It'd be laughs> okay. in millions yeah. of dollars to the city. <laughs> right. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, and it's it's something that I think, you know, especially given Madison, right, and the, right. the type of community that we are and what people we want, we're welcoming, right? Sure. We have good old Midwestern, you know, nice, but also, right. you know, Madison's pretty liberal and mm -hmm. open doors, policies, um, you know, and so trying to, 
you know, to let community members know, hey, sure. like if you're, you know, doing a mission trip down in El Salvador, you know, mm-hmm. and you, you know, get together with an organization and you think they might need English, is there a way that we could work together? Oh, right? And we can help. Okay. It, we don't just provide English here, but we can provide English training abroad or sure. online, um, you know, and sort of looking at what different avenues might come up for, for us in the future. Um, but yeah, you know, and I think that's where sort of the... Uh, challenges and opportunities, right? Sure. <laughs> As they go, um, you know, and you mentioned being downtown, right? And it's it's such a wonderful location, mm-hmm. but it is so expensive, you right. know. And we, it's not that we have to be there, um, mm-hmm. you know, but that we've been there for such a long time. And, uh, you know, we get people that were at the school 30 years ago, and they might be visiting with their kids or their even their grandkids oh, really? now. And it's so neat to have people walk in the door and say, oh, hey, you know, I was a student here 30 years ago. I just want to oh, come in nice. and check it out. Um, and that's really important to us. And we get the majority of our students find us just through word of mouth. Okay. And so if we moved, you know, if we found a different location, I think we'd really lose, you know, a sure. part of who we are as an sure. organization. That's fair. Um, you know, and so trying to, okay, well, what does that mean? Huh. So we're in this building, we have these high rents to pay. Right. Um, you know, so how can we sort of justify that? And sure. that's part of the renovation that we're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll be able to rent the space out then as well for private events. Okay. Um, you know, corporate social meetups sure. and that sort of thing. Um, to try and justify some, you know, gain some more <laughs> revenue to right, justify right. being downtown on the square. Sure. So do you see if there would be a different administration without getting too crazy political? Yeah. Something that was more welcoming, let's call it. Would that be beneficial? Yeah, definitely. It would, okay. we'd, we'd be very beneficial. It'd make okay. my job a whole lot easier. Gotcha. Um, you know, and again, we haven't seen a lot of differences in visa denial rates or sure. anything like that, but it's the number of applications. Right. Right. And the people that are just, nope, I'm going to go to Canada because, you know, I'm not even going to bother right. because I think I might get my visa denied. Sure. In the US. So yeah, a different, a different administration right. would definitely help us. Gotcha. Um, you know, I think we're also trying to, I was part of the first ever, um, English USA, Education USA roadshow that was hosted by, um, the U S department of commerce. Okay. This last fall, we went to Colombia and Brazil. Um, and it was the first time we've ever really done anything as a group, as a country. Sure. To try and say, come to the U.S., you know, as a study really? destination. Okay. And that's something a lot of other countries do um, and have a lot of support from the government. Mm-hmm. You know, so even if it were the current administration, but they were to say, you know, well, we're going to, as a whole, come up with some policies and, um, you know, sort of put some money behind trying to encourage people to come to the U.S. as a sure. whole. And, you know, and that's what you saw with Malta. So literally overnight, the you know the government said we see this you know as a huge sort of um you know revenue generating right. market for our country and they did they put promotional materials together they went you know sent you know hundreds of people around the globe to to recruit for Malta and it worked you know they're booked. hundreds of like, people how big is Malta not very big I mean we sent ten percent of our yeah. population right <laughs> I mean I think pretty so they do homestay families um and so if you want to go to Malta. You're going to join a program and you're going to stay with a family. All right. Um, and I, I can't remember the statistics, but like the majority of families on Malta are hosting students. I mean, that's how the everyone is literally families. involved. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Um, like their biggest export is education. Yes. And ours um, across the country in terms of higher education, um, we're sitting somewhere between four and five. Um, oh. So this is, you know, it's huge. It's a, it's a huge industry that I think, right. you know, people just don't generally think a whole lot about no um you know but again like when you look at it at the local level you know and right. you see the number of students that are coming in and how much money they're bringing in you go well yeah, interesting that. yeah money that's talks i love that having way. people like you on this business it's podcast right because right? you're like where's this <laughs> money existed? coming from exactly. right exactly yeah um so yeah so yeah our money comes internationally in into sure. the country and again yeah sort of looking at okay what ways does the business need to grow in sure. order to survive and sustain and Really sort of pivoting, you know, sure. uh, essentially becoming an events venue mm-hmm. is not something that I ever thought that I'd be getting into. No. Um, you know, but it sort of it was a solution to a problem that sure. we had. And so we went, oh, okay, You got some we'll space. You guys aren't around on the weekends, so why not, right? Yeah, nights and weekends are totally free. And this sure. gorgeous building is just sitting there empty, you know. Right. All the windows have capital views. And, I mean. There's something to be said for that. Yeah. So That's we'll fair. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So that's happening, you said the ribbon cutting is March... March 2nd. Th- March 2nd. Yeah, okay. so we're, yeah, we're, I mean, just two weeks, and then, yeah, then we'll be open. Um, oh, I don't know. I'm excited, nervous, sure. you know. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like 
uh, you know, I'm sort of at the age where a lot of my friends, you know, have small children, are sure. having babies, and right. I travel, so I have dogs and no kids. But this uh, you win. this new <laughs> this new events business is definitely like my baby, right? Sure. More, more than a year in the making, and we're almost there. Nice. That's super cool. <laughs> yeah. So let's downshift into marketing because you yeah. mentioned that you travel around yep. to essentially bring awareness. Yes. So that sounds like a pretty cool job, but I imagine you can't just show up in some country and yell in the corner like, "Hey, want to learn English?" Yeah. So, Come on over. you know, I don't think our marketing strategies are all that different from, you know, any other local company that was hoping to make, you know, sort of inroads abroad. OK. Um, so I work primarily um, starting, at least if I'm going to go into a market and mm -hmm. um, I work with educational agents. So okay. think of like a travel agent but sure. instead of the, you know, that they sell you know, an all inclusive package to the Riviera Maya. Sure. They sell language programs. Um, All right. You know, so they might have five or six schools that they partner with. Um, and so I go down to, to meet with these agents, try to get them on board if they yeah. don't already, you know, sell us as a location. Um, and so a lot of that is really selling Madison, you know. Interesting. Language schools are, you know, not that our school isn't unique, but to – you know, to the student before they arrive, right. they all look the same, right? Sure. Everyone else. You learn English, right? Exactly. Our teachers are the best. Our curriculum's the best. Sure. You know, it all looks more or less the same on paper. Right. So what differentiates us? Sure. Madison, you know, and the engagement with the community. Um, you know, we have a much lower cost of living than, sure. you know, Boston or New York or San Francisco. Right. Um, you know, you see and on Facebook and things, people post about, oh, Madison's expensive and high taxes and da da, da. And yeah, I mean, to some extent, sure. more than it was in the past. Right. But it's still so low compared in to... In relation to, right? Yeah, the yeah. coasts and sure. things like that. Yeah. So compared to San Francisco, we're, we're doing I okay. I mean, we're less than half, so yeah. we're all right. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, telling them about Madison, you know, really trying to explain why it's a great place for them to be. Yeah. Um, and then I might go, you know, try and connect to the um, American chapter of the American Chamber of Commerce uh, okay. in different cities. So, sure. for example, I was in Barranquilla, Colombia in November, um, and their chapter down there is doing a lot to try and create connections between U.S.-based businesses yeah. um, and Colombian businesses and things like really? that. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for staffing um we, let's see, companies that have locations here like Trek or Pacific Cycle, mm -hmm. but that also have, you know, international offices sure. and things like that. So trying to find where are those connections that already exist, right. you know, and going to meet with them and just really asking them, okay, what opportunities are there? Right. You know, the the Chamber of Commerce, um, you know, is a great resource. Uh, National or local? It, uh, well, I'm finding locally, hopefully, you know, sure. it's new to us, but internationally, okay. um, you know, so you can, you can talk to your representative and say, Hey, sure. you know, this is our business. I want to go to Japan. You know, what context do you have? Oh, um, interesting. And there, you know, there are people that exist just to put you in touch with people. <laughs> abroad. That is cool. So, yeah. And then a lot of, you know, going to universities and right. sort of letting them know who we are and what kind of opportunities might be there. Um, but it could also be just going straight to the businesses, you know. Sure. So if I know, okay, well, you know, Trek has a, you know, an office in Colombia. Right. Get it, you know, hold of someone there. Sure. Um, and that sort of, yeah, those relationships build up over time. All right. So a mix of, yeah, cold calling, <laughs> <laughs> and just some, you know, strategic planning on on what markets we want to go into, and sure. that's the thing, you know. I have one other person that's helping me now, but for the last few years, it's just been me. Oh. I'm traveling, and it's All a right. lot, you know, so it means Because you're trying to operate the, the school itself. Yeah, so running and, the school and, you know, being really on the road more often than not. Sure. Um, you know, trying to bring more students in and mm -hmm. increase our enrollment. And that, you know, it's hard and a challenge and, you know, exciting all mm -hmm. at the same time. And I think people look at it and like, oh, it's kind of a glamorous job. Sure. And it's like, oh, it is. But you also live out of a suitcase. And, right. You know, it's it's tiring. Um, but because there's only one of me, you can't be everywhere. Right? right. So you have to go, okay, you know, who's already coming to Wisconsin? Right. Who's already coming to Madison or what sort of... Um, you know, advantages do we have and what markets do we want to, sure. you know, open into because of that. Right. And trying to be very, yeah, strategic about. Just lowest hanging fruit and just move up, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And knowing, you know, especially in the market that that low hanging fruit changes, you know, right. sometimes very quickly. Sure. So trying to be really aware of what's going on internationally, politically and things sure. like that, you know, makes a difference. So, um, for example, uh, it was just over a year ago now, the, um, Canadian uh, ambassador to 
Saudi Arabia made some negative comments and the oh. Saudi Arabian government overnight pulled all of their students from Saudi Arabia. Um, from Canada. From Canada, not from us. But, you know, it just wow. goes to show how, you know, quick sure. um, those kinds it's of things. a light switch. Exactly. Yeah. So making sure that we're <laughs> trying to be, you know, aware right. of what's going on and we're so all we're not good. <laughs> caught out on anything. Sure. Yeah. I, you know, we're we're a long term, you know, market that. Right. Uh, so, you know, you know, people I think are worried at the moment. The U.S. isn't gonna, you know, it's not like people are just gonna stop coming here to study. Right. Um, but I think you know, schools, universities, especially you know, need to really look at what they're doing, you know, to attract and retain international sure. students and. And really see, you know, what can we do to be different? What can we do to stand out? Because just being a university in the U.S. is right. not enough anymore. No. No, there's tons of them. Yeah, exactly. There <laughs> are tons of them. Yeah. So when you're going to all these places, mm -hmm. do you have to speak their language? Ah, no. No. <laughs> so I speak Spanish. Okay. Um, and can maybe say hi or bye or all thank right. you. Um, Google Translate is an amazing thing. Oh, it's interesting. It's really, really okay. good. Um, so I was in Japan last year and... Uh, in a sort of a re more of a remote city, you mm -hmm. know. So when you're in Tokyo, a lot of signs are in English. And sure. You can take the subway around and, yeah, you know, enough people on the street speak English that you can get by. Sure. Um, but where I was was a fairly small city and there weren't any signs in English. No. Really no one spoke English. Sure. Um, and so I downloaded the sort of like Google Translate app ahead of time. And it's really cool because, you know, you just show it, like take your phone and you can yeah. take a picture of anything and it'll translate for it. So I'm in this guest house of a university and it's kind of up in a mountain. So um, I'm trying to think maybe equivalent of the Pacific Northwest, that kind of okay. climate. It's sure. kind of damp. Right. Um, a little bit cooler. It was in the 50s or so. Right. So I'm in this guest house, which is Japanese style, right? So it's super tiny, uh, like a single mattress on the ground kind sure. of thing. And I have no idea how to turn the lights on. I have no oh. idea like, <laughs> how to turn the heat or air conditioning on. And, sure. You know, so, yeah, you know, after 25 hours of flying, you right. know, totally jet lagged, exhausted. like trying I just to, want to turn the lights yeah, on. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and taking like 15 minutes to turn the lights on. Because I had to use the app to, you know, try and figure out how the remote control worked. So, sure. So all those experiences, although at the time sometimes they make you want to cry. Right. Um, you know, I think it's also, it's such a good reminder for when I come back home and, you know, right. see our students and realize, you know, what they go through sure. on a day-to-day -day basis, you know. Brings a level of reality to it, I suppose. Totally. Sure. It's humbling, very humbling. Yeah. <laughs> you can't get too full of yourself if yeah. you're, you spend 15 minutes trying to turn the lights on. Sure. <laughs> it's just a light switch. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, that's funny. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I know it's good. You know, the traveling aspect is, I don't know, we joke in the office that, you know, someday I have to write a book about it because it's, it's right? wonderful and horrible all at the same sure. time. It'll get it's edited. It's not happening so it's to you. Well, exactly. You know, it's not happening to you. It can be good. But. You know, things like, I don't know, I think especially as Midwesterners, right? We don't want to offend anyone. Right? Sure. And you're always nice and you're well, always Well, most of us don't. Polite, I'm, but... I'm cool with it. <laughs> okay. But I'm like, I think, sure. yeah, I'm my guiding principle is like, I don't want to offend anyone. Sure. Um, you know, so internationally, what does that mean? Well, it means like, you know, when you're traveling and an agent in Mexico is going to take you out for a nice dinner, mm -hmm. you know, you eat whatever they order for you. Sure. And that could be, you know, three gigantic cow tongues on a plate huh. and go, oh, okay, this is, uh, this is a work delicacy it out. that they eat and I'm going to chew through this. Sure. Um, Bring the corona. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if there's enough of those to go around for, for me to like cow tongue, but sure. um, oh, some people really like it. All right. Uh, so, yeah, but, you know, so traveling internationally is, it's a riot. Um, sure. You know, and I travel alone by myself um, for the most part. And, mm -hmm. it, you know, I think what I'm always surprised by is how wonderful people are around the world, kind of no That's very true. Go, very you know? true. It's, yes. I think sometimes my family, especially when I first started, they were like, oh, are you going to be safe? Sure. You know, you're going to Columbia by yourself. Is it right. okay? And I was, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. You know, people are wonderful. They're proud of where they come from. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and they they want to, you know, help you experience their culture you right. know, uh, at its best. Sure. And so it's, you know, I feel so lucky to be able to do that for a job and nice. experience that. and. Um, yeah, so you put up with the, the long train sure. rides and the sure. <laughs> multiple nights in a hotel. But, right? Yeah. So how do you choose where you're going to go to to market? Yeah, so I spend a lot of time looking at the data. So okay. um, there's a 
an organization called IIE that okay. puts out an annual report called the Open Doors Report. Okay. And so this tracks all international students um, from around the world, and they come into the U.S. So it'll break wow. it down for age groups or program, and so they'll break it down as well for ESL sure. students. So I'll look at that, and I'll you know, look at, you know, what's the percentage growth in each market, what's mm-hmm. the decrease in each market. Um, can I combine that with, you know, things that I've heard, um, mm-hmm. you know, news stories and things like that to try and, you know, pick out, you know, is this maybe an emerging market? Right. Um, you know, and a lot of that is guesswork as well. Sure. You know, um, but it is, you know, based on, you know, the numbers and the percentage growth. And, right. I say visa denials and things like that. Sure. So, yeah, make choices. There's some countries that have always been good for us. You know, South Korea, Japan have been really solid markets. Okay. Um, for the last 30 some years. Sure. You know, but you have a country like, well, Saudi Arabia, when we first started, Indonesia was a huge market. Really? And tons of students from Indonesia. Yeah. Huh. So um, the original owners of the school, a husband and wife um, team, and there's, you know, stories that they would go do student fairs. And at the end of the fair, parents would send their kids on the plane back home with them. Wow. Right? Like that was, that's how, how the market yeah, worked. Yeah, it's a good trade um, show. <laughs> yeah. But I can't tell you the last time we had an Indonesian student at the school with us now. Oh, you know, interesting. So markets can come online and, sure. and change. But yeah, Japan, South Korea have been sort of stable ones for us. Sure. Um, and the last couple of years, I've done a lot of work to try and really get into Colombia and Brazil. Okay. Um, which, you know, it, it, a lot of what we do, too, is we want really high diversity in the classroom. Okay. So sure. you might have a classroom of 10 students and you have nine different countries represented. Wow. Um, you know, and that's part of who we are. and That's part of sure. what we want. Sure. Which is very different than some schools say, I'm just going to pick two countries. Right. And both both they models work. Yeah, they might say I'm going to go to China and I'm going to go to Saudi Arabia, right? Wow. They extending markets and they just do all of the work there. Sure. You know, and that's I think for where we are, um, a little bit more remote. We just we couldn't get away with that. But also, right. you see what happens with the coronavirus now. Sure. You know, and all the Chinese students aren't able to come. Oh. So you know, there are a lot of schools in Australia that are stuck at the moment because. Sure. You know, they had 80% of their international students coming from China, and oh, none wow. of them can come for the their yes start of the semester. Sure. So, yeah, I'd rather, you know, Oopsie. have a little bit more variety. Right. Um, it's more work, for sure. Sure. Um, you know, but I think it guarantees us sort of a long-term stability sure. that we wouldn't otherwise Because see. whichever part of the world is having its issue of the day, whatever. They can have their issue and then right. come back maybe five years <laughs> from now. Exactly. Fix that. And come exactly. Over. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh-huh. Do you get a lot of, I know there's a lot of larger companies that have international people that are doing programming and yeah. stuff like that. Software people. Yeah. Do you get a lot of those people? Not so much. Um, we are we have a lot of students that are wanting to go into IT fields and things okay. like that. But in terms of companies, it's kind of a new area that we're looking into and sure. again trying to figure out okay, how do we how do we start making those contacts. Right. Um, the educational agents that we work with, you know, are in a lot of ways how we would start. You know, so I would go, you know, to Japan for example and work sure. with a, an educational agent partner. And say, we want this kind of client, or we just right. put this program together. You know, can you help us in country find a good connection? Sure. Um, and they can do that, but it, more and more, I'm really trying to see what can we do just on our own. Right. Um, as we pay a commission to the educational agency. Okay, I was just going to ask yeah. if there's a referral fee or something like that. Yes, okay. yeah. Um, so it can look anywhere like 20 to 35% of a tuition, oh. student's tuition. So it's a, it's a lot of big money. money. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, and so for that reason, if we can maybe work with, you know, the American Chamber of Commerce, sure. you know, or local organizations that have international roots other way, other mm-hmm. places, you know, that we don't have to go through an educational sure. agent in that way. 35%. That's healthy. Which, I know. It's not. Yeah. Well, good for them. <laughs> I know. In, in my next life, right? Well, yeah. Right. <laughs> I to, yeah. Um, but it is actually something we, we sort of toyed around with of. You know, do we open an agency here? Sure. Um, because we send, send people abroad. Yeah, we send teachers abroad. You know, oh. so uh, there's not a huge market. You know, for sort of American high school students, but right. who knows? You never know. Things might change. And, sure. And um, because we do have contacts with schools from mm-hmm. all over the world, it maybe it could work the other way as well. So sure. keeping the doors open. Sure, that's fair. <laughs> so I want to talk about the space that you have. Yeah. So. You were out of the old space, or in a couple of weeks yep. you'll be out of there, and into the new space, which yeah. is right next door, yes. or essentially... Literally right next door. Literally, yep. <laughs> just throw a box, you're yes. good. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right. 
So is this a bigger space, smaller space, different space? So we inhabited this space plus the space that we're currently operating in. Okay. Um, so when we transition in two weeks' time, it's going to be about 50% of the space that we originally had. Okay, shrinking a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so okay. shrinking quite a bit. Um, sure. Which you know, sort of allowed us to invest in the sure. renovations of the building, right. but is also just, it makes things a lot more sustainable for sure. us. Smaller um, but better, that's all right. You know, f the building was, was set for about 400, 450 students. Right. And although, you know, I would like to grow a little bit, we're never going to get to that number. Um, sure. You know, unless, I don't want to say never, but I understand what you're saying. And the next, yeah, however many years. That's a big and, jump. Yeah. Um, you know, and when that jump comes, then we'll just find a bigger space and sure. that'll be okay. But for now, um, yeah, this will really, really help. So what we ended up doing is I actually am opening it up as a separate business. Sure. Um, so that it eventually might take on a life of its own that and be so completely, you know, apart from the school. Sure. Um, so we're calling it Ellsworth Block. Ellsworth. Ellsworth Block. So Ellsworth is... Help me with that. Yeah. <laughs> The, the name of the brothers. So the Ellsworth brothers were the original brothers in 1871 that built the building. Oh, wow. So they okay. built the bottom where the old-fashioned is was a grocery store. Oh, uh, really? And then huh. upstairs it was the uh, Wisconsin uh, Business College. All right. Which primarily taught, you know, uh, young immigrants coming in and wanting to take business classes. Sure. Some of them wanted to take penmanship classes or even English classes. Wow. So we're kind penmanship of coming, class. Yeah, full <laughs> circle in that. So you, you know, know it's old. The building was originally, you know, built for that, and, sure. and we're going to be back in there again. So we found when they were doing the renovations, like, in the ceilings, tucked away, like, old posters and things from the really? school. Yeah, so it was really, really cool. Um, but so that's why we're calling it Ellsworth Block. So the building is registered with the State Historical Society as okay. that. And so we thought we really, you know, what are we want to sort of – um, embrace right and celebrate sure. the the historic nature of the building. When you say we, do you mean yeah. the school? So, me and my team that okay. we're working with. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, and yeah, so I have uh, one other um, girl, Hannah, who who works with me at the school, who's sort of my brain and helping all me right. keep sane with all of this. Nice. So she and I are the ones that are kind of, you know, throwing around all the ideas and. So is she co-owner? Yeah. I'm okay. The two of Very us. cool. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, it's been fun. It's been a lot of work again kind of really having no idea what we do but again finding out that the madison area has a lot of really wonderful resources for people that oh, want to start their own business oh a ton um you know so uh, i've had a couple of meetings with the small business development center sure um down on campus and it's they've been super there. helpful you mm -hmm. know and have you thought through all of these things and you know for the most part yeah we had right um, we're teachers you know by nature and planners and sure so <laughs> we're also very cautious so right. we, you know want to make sure that that it makes sense right. but it was really good to talk through talk through things with them and just kind of make sure yeah this this actually makes sense you right. know and it's viable on paper right um and so you had to come up with business plan and all mm -hmm. that jazz okay. yeah and all that yeah so yeah, next steps for us um, would be you know to eventually um, try and get like a, a license for beer and wine. Oh wow! Um, and and be able to do that, but that'll be yeah, we kind of the Wisconsin down the portion road. of yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wesley. Exactly. That's yeah. awesome. Or just the so event space. The you're event talking. space. So really now, yeah, um, the idea is that the the school then would rent the space from, sure. from the events business. All right. Um, but that, you know, my hope kind of is that maybe it takes off and it does so well that the school can find a different location. Sure. And the events business, you know, can be there. It's a gorgeous space. Yeah. Um, we're go we'll have some open houses and things like that. Um, so people from the community can come in and have right. a look at it. Super but, cool. Yeah, it's really, yeah, it's really pretty. We have some renderings on the website if anyone wants to take a look. So it's just ellsworthblock.com. All right. Um, and as soon as we get pictures done here in two weeks time right. and those will go up too so people can see it but um yeah the original staircases we found original tile in the building wow all the original windows and everything are there so for any like yeah history buffs or people that are really into architecture it's a very yeah. cool building nice yeah so is this will you own essentially that the second floor or the whole building the, the second and third floors gotcha yeah mm -hmm. okay the second and third floors so yeah old-fashioned is is where it it's is its own game yeah okay. harvest is is where they are gotcha. um but we'll be able to partner with them for catering for events and things like oh that. very cool okay yeah, so we have a sort of a back alley connection sure stairwell that goes up and down like literally a back alley literally connection. Back alley <laughs> connection yeah um so yeah so we'll be able to to work with them on I'm providing, yeah, food and drinks and things sure. like that for events. I mean, of course, working with other caterers as well. Right. Um, but having them right there is really, really neat. So what made you decide to go down this road? Well, really, you know, I was from looking at the school and looking at the budget of the school and just saying we can't justify the rent. Oh, all right. You know, so I was <laughs> looking at the numbers month after month went, 
something needs to change. Sure. I knew I was doing absolutely everything in my power to bring in more students. Right. But it kind of it almost didn't matter. Right. Um, but also wanting to come up with something that wasn't so fluctuating, wasn't so volatile. You know, sure. the educational market kind of, you know, mm-hmm. um, has its ups and downs and wanting to, you know, have some stability for for sure. the school. So started to think, oh, well, you know, we have this space. Could we do anything with right. it? And then the idea just kind of took off from there. So really, you know, it came out of a, a problem that we had with the school All right. until it took on a life of its own. And I really, I, you know, the events business is a whole nother industry <laughs> for me. Um, but it been getting really great feedback, you know, sure. so meeting with different businesses in the area, you know, bringing wedding planners in and saying, mm-hmm. what do you think of this space? Or you sure. know, do you think we can make a go of this? And also just realizing that. You know, Madison has a lot of really wonderful locations, but there's mm-hmm. really not a lot downtown on the square with capital views like that. No. Um, so thinking, oh, we actually have something that's a little bit unique here. And right. Let's try and take advantage of it. Right. Um, and yeah, so that's good. I'm just try, trying to think of many spaces downtown that yeah, aren't so you gargantuan, have, right? No, and you have the library, which has a few sure. rooms that you could rent. You know, it's a little bit off the square and it's, you know, it's a totally different building sure. you know, than, than what we have. Probably has to be a little quieter. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Quiet. At the <Yeah>. library, right? <laughs> Inside voices. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, and you know, you have the Edgewater and the sure. concourse. You know, you have the more traditional kind of hotel right. venues. Um, but we don't really have a lot in terms of like unique no. venues. Um, and this is going to be, it's going to be kind of on the uh, upper side of um, event rentals and things like that. Sure. Just in you know, in terms of what the space looks like. Right. Um, but it it does have a mix of you know, it old exposed ceilings and sure. stone walls and stone so walls cool. and bricks you know paired with you know brand new right. everything um so yeah, it should be really neat so did you go to hannah or did hannah come to you and say let's do this so hannah and i work together for the school right, right. and so and we're sharing an office at the moment in our condensed space right um and i've been you know mentioning it for the last couple of years um and you know sort of again looking at the budgets of the school more and more um, and I used Hannah very much as a sounding board. Sure. Um, so she was someone that, yeah, yeah, I think, you know, you keep talking about this and this is right. how it works. Go for it, you know. All right. And so she was yeah, a cheerleader, I think, All right. um, in the beginning. And now someone that is very much, you know, she's helping me. Yeah, she's she's great at okay. Here's the list. Here's sure. you know, here's all the things. Whereas I'm more of a an ideas, right? Okay, right. we're gonna try this. Who am I gonna go talk to? Who am I gonna right. go network with? Um, and she's like, okay, well, we have this contract that needs to be signed. <laughs> <have this." laughs> That's okay, funny. Like, yeah, so you know, helping me, right. um, you know, move our internet and phone providers over sure. to you know the new space and things like that, which you know you need, and that's something that's been you know really fun, and I think something in terms of starting a business that I had no idea. I mean, one. Sure. Anyone can do it, right? right. Like an idea and like mm-hmm. go for it. <laughs> I was terrified of it. I was like, I can't do this. You know, sure. I'm just a teacher, but I uh, never use it just a. Exactly, uh-uh. exactly. But also, you know, it, it really does take a lot of different kinds of people. Right? Sure. And so you have the people that, you know, are willing to go out and talk to everyone and mm-hmm. have the ideas and the big picture, but you also really need someone that, you know, can help you with those details right. and, and everything. That's a huge, I completely understand that. Yeah. It seems to be the. Um, I don't know if entrepreneurs curse is the right don't. phrase, <laughs> but essentially, like we got this big picture, let's just make it happen, yes, and exactly, and little details like, do we have internet? I know, like, uh, oh, good, good should probably make a call there. That. Yeah, <laughs> just minor. Like, we got this building, minor we details. did all this stuff. Exactly, exactly. What do we need internet for? Exactly. Mm. So super yeah. cool. Congrats yeah. on that. That's Thanks. super awesome. Yeah, I'm really excited. So. Yeah. So we got uh, two websites, right? There's a Wesley website, yeah. which is w e s l i dot com. Okay. Yep. Well, that'll be tough to remember. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wesley. Um, yeah. It stands for Wisconsin ESL Institute. Okay. Um, and then Ellsworth Block. All right. Uh, dot com. That's so all one word. Ellsworth Block. One Ellsworth word. Block mm-hmm. dot com. One word. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Jennifer, thank you so much for being no, on the thank show. Thank you so much. This has been super cool. This yeah. went crazy fast. So. I, no, I did. Yeah. I, I really <laughs> appreciate it. And yeah, thanks for letting me talk. <laughs> no, that's, that's what we do here, right? <laughs> This has been Authentic Business Adventures, the business program that brings you the struggles, stories, and triumphant successes of business owners, blah, 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 business owners across the land. I'll get this right yet. Coming to you from the Sun Prairie Community Studios, underwritten by Bank of Sun Prairie. If you're listening to this on the web, please like, subscribe, and share. My name is James Kateman, and Authentic Business Adventures is brought to you by Calls on Call, offering call answering and receptionist services for small businesses across the country on the web at callsoncall.com. 
as well as draw in customers business coaching, offering business coaching services for entrepreneurs in all stages of their business on the web at drawincustomers.com. And of course, the Bold Business Book, a book for the entrepreneur and all of us, available on Amazon and wherever fine books are sold. We'd like to thank you, our wonderful listeners, as well as our guest, Jennifer Phillips, director of the Wisconsin ESL Institute. Jennifer, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you very much. This has been super cool. Find us airing on 103.5 Wednesdays at 1 p.m., Sundays at 2 p.m., as well as at sunpraymediacenter.com. Holy cow, it's a mouthful. Past episodes can be found morning, noon, and night at the podcast link found at drawincustomers.com. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next week. I want you to stay awesome. And if you do nothing else, enjoy your business.